Hey everyone, you probably thought this was another video about some amazing race flight features. Well, it is not. It is about something that's been, you know, kind of everyone's been talking about lately and that's VTXs. Uh, there's been a big scandal because some VTXs are supposedly not going to work in beta flight 3.3. Um, it's literally over one line of code. Uh, the protocol they implemented used two stop bits and Smart Audio only uses one, which is amazing enough, the reason that only TBS VTXs have ever worked with RaceFlight because we use their documents to implement the protocol. I know everyone thinks we cut and pasted their code, but I guess this is a little bit of proof that we didn't. Um, so what the, they found is that they were implementing the protocol improperly and it wasn't reliable. So they're trying to fix it in Betaflight 3.3 and by fixing the protocol and implementing it correctly, it's breaking all the clones of the TBS VTX out there, or at least the VTXs that cloned the protocol. Uh, they must have just cut and pasted uh, Betaflight code, or at very least based their code on the Betaflight code. And by doing so, they actually used an incorrect protocol, not the actual smart audio protocol. That being said, that's not that big a deal because it's just one line of code and you could recompile your own beta flight version and make it better if you wanted to or get someone else to and, and still support your VTX. So if you have one of these VTXs, this wouldn't be my concern. Something that is my concern is that, you know, if I'm out flying with my buddies or I'm out racing, uh, the one thing that affects everyone there is your VTX. If your VTX bleeds over, if your VTX is in the same power, um, if your VTX has any issues, it takes out everyone that's up in the air with you. So you really should make sure you have a high quality VTX. Uh, you know, we test our hardware a lot. We do a lot to make sure it works really well. Um, the VTX should have even more testing done to it. It should be perfect because this is something that affects everyone else. Your quad falling out of the sky might hit someone on the head, but it's a lot less likely than your VTX blowing out someone if it's incorrectly. So what did I do? Um, AKK has been the one that everyone's been buying lately. So I just placed a little order on Amazon of a few VTXs, four different ones. Um, and I wanted to test the levels of these to see if they're as bad as I suspected they are. Now this doesn't apply to any other VTXs on the market. The only ones I'm testing is AKK. It's these specific VTXs. They happen to be the ones I see a lot of people buying. And I wanted to check to see if they're as bad as I thought they were. So what I did is I created a little test rig here. As you can see here, I am using the immersion meter. I am going to, this is a, there's a TBS VTX in my quad here um, that I'm going to use as the baseline. TBS is the gold standard VTX. It's the one accepted at every single race I've ever been to in the US. Uh, immersion is also very good from what I understand. I haven't tested them, so I can't say for sure. Um, but I do know TBS is the one everyone's using. And what's important when you're using a VTX is everyone has the same power levels. I have tested v TBS in the past. They've always been within plus or minus 20 uh, milliwatt on all the VTXs. So I'm going to do the same test. I'm going to test the, the TBS one. I'll show you what it outputs when it's in 200 milliwatt mode. And then we'll show you what these random VTXs output. Hopefully they'll output all similar powers, but something tells me they won't. As you can see, this VTX is currently in pit mode. Uh, which means it's not transmitting, but uh, it is powered up. The quad is plugged in. As you can see, it's, it shows zero milliwatts, which is what we want to see essentially uh, when it's in pit mode. So I'm going to use my crossfire and I'm going to put it, take it out of pit mode and put it in 200 milliwatt. Now that I've done this, we can see we can get a baseline here. Our baseline is 320 ish milliwatts. Now you might ask why that's not showing 200. What I'm told is the attenuator here is not calibrated properly. Um, so it reads a little bit off. You can see as it heats up, it goes a little bit lower, which is what it should do. Uh, basically as it's getting a little hotter, it drops a little lower to kind of protect itself. Uh, we're gonna do the same test now with these other VTXs. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to take these little beauties right here, four brand new, AKK VTX. What's nice is they do have this connector here, which I have been pushing for for about a year. So it is going to be really easy to do this test. I'm just going to plug it into the meter here. We're going to take this little meter here. We're going to see what it reads on each of these. If you do happen to have one of these meters, it's a very easy test to do. Um, you just need to plug it in and see what it reads. 
So we're going to put in some power. And it's on channel A2. Um, just for clarity's sake, we're going to set that to the same channel. Okay, now that we're powered up, we can see that it's at A7, 200 milliwatts. Now, if we look at this power, it is reading 657, almost double what it should be reading. Um, this would, if you're all run 200, you're running with this guy, you're going to see some major ghosting and other issues. Um, this is why it's important <laughs> to buy a good VTX. Let's try the next one. All right, I actually put on Fat Shark 7, which was the channel the other one was on. This is the new one. The other one was an A-band. It shouldn't make a difference, but we're going to see if it makes a difference on the second one. Okay, so uh, just to check, I uh, put the, the one in A8 as well to see if the power is the same. It was, it was about four, 340, so uh, the TBS one reads similar power levels regardless of the frequency. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we had a good baseline when I'm comparing against these other ones. All right, next one. Here we go. 432, that's what we're reading now. Let's change this frequency to see if it makes a difference. Okay, so this is even more concerning. I changed it to A8, and it's coming in at 533. Third one, at F7, it's actually reading low, which is even worse. Well, maybe not worse, but that means you're gonna get blown up by other people. It's at 224 and dropping steadily. Um, Let's see if we change this one to A8, what happens? Okay, A8, now we're reading 681. It's crazy. Um, so depending on the channel, it freaks out even more. This is really bad news. This might be why some VTX channels work a lot better than others if your VTXs are going crazy on some channels and not others. All right, last one. Let's see what the power level reads. Okay, it's in A8. 200 milliwatts as well, and it is reading 635 milliwatts. If you're by yourself, this probably doesn't matter, but uh, we don't usually fly by ourselves. Uh, as you can see, just so you can see, this is the manual. You can clearly see the little blinky two means 200 milliwatts. It goes 25, 200, 400, 600 if uh, you are in doubt. Um, so what, what's my conclusion here? What's my recommendations? Buy a VTX you can trust from a company you can trust. Uh, not everyone has their own meters where they can sit there and measure the VTX to make sure it's performing properly. If you take this to a multi-GP race, um, you know, Chris Thomas might have to yank out his hammer and smash it to bits. Found guilty. No! Because it definitely is not doing the power levels it should. I mean, maybe people are uh, blowing out people without even knowing you could have brand new VTXs and it and it doesn't work. So for now, um, we know the TBS one's good. We know the Immersion one's good. Uh, they've been certified by lots of race councils and they've been tested to death and I'm pretty confident Trappy tests them well. Um, the other ones, hopefully we'll get some testing, uh, get some more VTXs in here and see if they meet the power levels as well. But don't buy the uh, AKK VTXs. At very least, don't buy the ones that look like this because uh, those are the four random ones I got from Amazon and they do not work. These are going right in the garbage. It's a waste of money, um, but I'm hoping to keep you from wasting money in the same way.